Five o'clock, uh, November 25th, Selectman's meeting. Um, I just want to make a couple opening remarks, which um, one is just to thank Tracy for 20 years of service to the town. Some flowers. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. It's a long time, Tracy, and I appreciate all the help that, you know, those are from Ranch Me, John Board Selectman. Thank you. So we just wanted to thank you um, for, for all your years of service. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing is actually a clarification on my part. At the last meeting when we were discussing um, the chair and vice chair, I had said in error that it's a bylaw, which it's not. The correction would be that it is in a Selectman's policy. So it's actually a selectman's policy that was signed by, um, I believe it was Scott Bellabo, John Powderly, and Aaron Burke. So I misspoke, and that I had said it was a bylaw, but it's not. It's a selectman's policy. So uh, first thing on our agenda tonight is 5 p.m. tax classification hearing with our Board of Assessors and Principal Assessor Harald Chai and John Oliveri from the Board of Assessors. Let me ask if anyone's recording. Oh, sorry. Is anyone else recording the meeting other than Lake Cam? No. Madam Chair? I'm, yes. I make a motion to open the hearing. <clears throat> Second. Yes. Oh, roll call vote? No. No, just all in favor. Just no, all in favor. favor yeah. Leah, Fabian, aye. Aye. Well, good evening. Um, I'm Harold Schreid, Principal Assessor for the Town of Lakeville, uh, serving a number of communities, but uh, uh, especially fondly Lakeville. I've uh, been with the town, I think this is my third classification hearing, maybe fourth. I think it's the fourth. I think it's fourth. the fourth. Yes, so uh, delighted to be here uh, along with the chairman of our Board of Assessors, John Oliveri, and uh, the tax classification hearing. Uh, as you know, is um, a perfunctory exercise that uh, gives the Board of Selectmen an opportunity to uh, either adopt a single uniform ta tax rate that would be applied across all classes of property or alternatively split the rate, effectively shifting the burden onto the commercial property owner uh, to yield a um, uh, discount on the residential side. We'll talk a little bit, I'll talk a little bit about that as we proceed. Um, you have a document that I have prepared, um, and uh, just to uh, let you know that we're about, uh, uh, we're close to wrapping up the whole tax rate setting season, uh, the season that started early in the year uh, with um, the collection of all the information that we require to maintain our database, including uh, uh, an extensive num uh, a large number of inspections of, of uh, uh, new structures, new homes, um, additions, and all of that to uh, uh, identify newly taxable assets. Uh, we also uh, undertook an interim what we call an interim revaluation. We're required by Massachusetts law to annually update values to reflect uh, fair market value. Um, I might point out that we are we never, as assessors, deal with current value, but uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a fashion, historic value. Uh, the new assessments will reflect market conditions as they existed in uh, calendar year 2018. Mm -hmm. And it's the sales that uh, uh, that took place in calendar year 2018 that are uh, the basis then for the, uh, the decisions we make about where to uh, bring in our values on the various classes of property. Okay. Yep. When, when is a full classification required? A uh, uh, A full revaluation re with Department of Revenue audit uh, takes place. Uh, now, once every five years, uh, the last full revaluation audit uh, took place uh, uh, in fiscal year 2018. Okay, thank you. So we come then to the end of the year, 
um, to this classification hearing, looking to get your uh, your vote on what uh, we believe will likely be a single tax rate. Uh, historically, Lakeville has always uh, uh, chosen to adopt a single tax rate structure, and um, we're assuming that uh, that you'll uh, carry forward uh, with that. Many of the numbers that I'll present here in the next few minutes assume a single tax rate. Um, by way of terminology, uh, I've provided on the um, second page of the handout uh, some of the key concepts, uh, including a tax levy, tax levy being uh, the amount of property tax that we raise. Uh, this year we're looking to raise uh, $24,865,976 in uh, property taxes. Um, that only partially funds the town's budget, uh, but uh, certainly represents the lion's share of the revenue that it takes to run uh, this town. Um, the uh, levy ceiling is under Proposition 2.5, the uppermost cap on what the town could raise, um, and that, uh, that uh, is a figure of about $47,599,000. Uh, the actual levy is uh, significantly below uh, that levy ceiling. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, new growth revenue uh, came in at $404,745. New growth revenue representing all of the new taxable uh, properties and assets uh, in the community. Uh, that figure is up uh, a bit from last year, but uh, if you uh, drive around town, of course, you'll see a, a fair number of new homes that have gone up and condominiums and uh, other construction. So. All told, we have an additional $404,000 in tax revenue um, that uh, we'll be able to uh, collect. Madam Chair, yep. uh, can, uh, can I get a list of uh, how that was calculated by property? Uh, we do have a detailed report. I don't have it with me. No, no, that's fine. Yeah. Just if you could just get it over to the town administrator. Sure. Yeah, for planning do. purposes for next year's budget, Yes. I'd like to look at, you know, so interestingly, the Department of Revenue has uh, uh, gone back to a methodology that uh, they employed back 30 years ago when I uh, was assessor uh, in Lexington, um, where we had to detail property by property what we were counting in uh, our new growth estimates. For many uh, years, uh, 20, uh, perhaps 20, 25 years, they dispensed with that report uh, and uh, in favor of a, um, an, an accounting type method for uh, calculating growth. But uh, um, we're back to uh, a place where we can actually uh, point to each and every property that uh, uh, went into that uh, $404,000 Thank you. calculation. Um, the levy limit is under Proposition 2.5, the maximum uh, allowable um, limit to the property tax dollars that we can actually raise. We talked about the levy ceiling. There's another um, ceiling in effect. It's called the, the levy limit or the maximum allowable levy. Uh, that <coughs> maximum allowable levy stands at $24,872,333. Uh, and conferring with the town accountant, we'll be uh, looking to raise uh, just shy of that figure. Um, you'll see then uh, a recounting of, of the various components of the property tax levy uh, and um, what in effect is uh, a very small excess <coughs> levy capacity of $6,357. Uh, we really don't, <coughs> in reality, that. Uh, uh, those dollars can't actually be raised without going to the next highest tax rate, which would then throw us over the uh, maximum allowable levy. So when we sum all of our valuations, uh, we find that uh, about 86% of our taxable base uh, resides in the residential class. Um, the other 13.3% uh, would uh, be made up of commercial, industrial, and personal property. That
that uh, that bit of math tells us that it takes about a would take about a seven percent increase in uh, in commercial taxes to yield a one percent reduction on the residential side. For that reason and that reason alone, uh, the uh, board of assessors has recommended and again recommends tonight that uh, you do not split the tax rate. It, it just simply wouldn't yield enough of a benefit to the residential property owner to, uh, to, to uh, make it worth the while. Communities that split their rates uh, often have uh, 25, 30 percent of their tax base in commercial industrial properties. In those cases, uh, uh, those communities may uh, uh, split their tax rate to some greater effect, although I might point out that a number of municipalities that have split their rates uh, in the past are actually looking to go back to a single rate uh, that in large measure to um, portray the town as a, uh, a, a friendly place for uh, commercial industrial property owners to set up shop. If you adopt a single tax rate, we're looking at um, um, the tax rate, uh, a, a tax rate of $13.06, that's uh, down from $13.30 last year. But um, what taxpayers need to understand is with this interim revaluation and our response to uh, the uh, claiming market, um, our assessed valuations on residential properties will uh, go up on average about 6 to 7 percent. So values go up, tax rate goes down. Overall, uh, most property owners are going to see uh, something on the um, uh, in, in the realm of two and a half to three percent increase in their taxes. It's variable depending upon the uh, uh, the actual increase in the valuation uh, that a property owner might experience. If you've added an addition, of course, your, of course, your taxes will go up more uh, than the average. Uh, you'll see in the bottom of uh, the page then um, what uh, we're projecting for an average increase, um, residential increase, that comes to uh, $321. Um, and uh, so the average tax bill last year was $4,777. We uh, estimated that that new average tax bill will be a titch over $5,098 to be exact. And that's on the single family? Uh, that's uh, on the single family homes, yes. Okay. You will see on, in the condo sectors and commercial sectors uh, uh, fairly comparable increases in, um, in assessed valuations. On the commercial side, uh, an average of about five, uh, roughly 5%. Condominiums may be a little bit more, uh, something on the order of about 7 to 8 percent on average. Again, it varies a little bit from development to development, but uh, um, as an average, we're about 7 to 8 percent on the condominiums. Uh, I offer up on the next page then uh, a motion, uh, and this motion would yield, uh, if voted, would yield. Uh, a CIP ship factor of 1.0 with a corresponding residential factor of 1.0. All that simply means is that uh, when we do the math, we end up with a single tax rate. Okay, um, I'll make a motion that the uh, Lakewood Board of Selectmen vote in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 56, as amended, the percentage of the local tax levy, which will be borne by each class of real and personal property relative to setting fiscal year 2020 tax rates and set the residential factor at one with the corresponding CPI shift of 1.0 pending approval of the town's annual tax recap by the Massachusetts Department of Revenue. Second. Any discussion? Talk about that at all? Or You want to contribute anything, John? I would love to add more. <laughs> I just have a problem speaking, but uh, all did a very good job at uh, capturing the Okay. Anything? Nope. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. So, 
Aye. I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. I do have are... a bit of housekeeping that needs to be oh, done oh, okay. before. Before we close. No. Nope. Okay. Okay. So, in favor? Aye. Aye. And. So, uh, this is our LA5 uh, classification uh, document. Um, there's a place to sign below, but let me uh, comment. The Department of Revenue now is requiring the Board of Selectmen to individually uh, go into the, their gateway account. Uh, I assume you have one. If you don't have one, I just got one yesterday. Okay, great. Um, you need to go into that account then. Um, you can do that from your home computer or office computer uh, and uh, check the little box under uh, Board okay. of Selectmen. And, okay. uh, and make sure it's safe after you check the box. There's a button that says save. Okay. But uh, we would like to have for the files um, this Assigned. document signed. Okay. And uh, you don't have to sign it now. I suppose you could give it to uh, Tracy. Okay. Great. Good. Okay. So we're good. Okay. Uh, let's see. All set. Anything All set. Do you have any other questions for us? The only one question, I, I looked at the uh, the tax recap that's going to be submitted to the state for the tax approval. I was a little concerned that there was no overlay reserve set aside in the 2020 budget. There's no amount in the 2020 budget for overlay reserve. It was the other day when I looked. Well, there was $50,000 in it added to it. But during the process of the budget process, there was no amount that was used for the overlay reserve. For this? For, for this, the current year that we're in, this right. there right. wasn't any. Correct. There was, uh, during the budget planning purposes, um, I believe because of the amount that we currently have in the overlay, um, we didn't John, can you? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes, you just prompted my memory. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, if it prompted your memory and you want to oh, no, look at that, no. Um, during the budget setting process last year for the current fiscal year that we're in at this mm -hmm. point, um, 2020, because of the amount that we already have uh, in the overlay, we didn't feel that we needed to continue to, to add to that that amount um, unnecessarily fund it, so the to speak. The problem so. that I'm concerned about is that, you know, that was one-time revenue and that we're going to have to raise that money. I don't know. For the last time I looked at it, I think we had... About four, five hundred thousand dollars left in the overlay surplus, which is now combined as one as the overlay right. reserve. Right. Um, so down the road, we're going to get burned because that money for the overlay that was normally set aside was used to balance the operating budget for salaries and expenses, and that's not a good idea. It, um, I, my comment will it was not a unilateral decision at that point. We'd had discussions with the other um, uh, parties to the budget setting process. So if, if you would like to continue going, reverting back to funding it, um, we're, we're not opposed to that. No, so. I know you're not opposed to it, but it's going to have a big effect on the budget. A $200,000 effect on the budget for fiscal 21 can have a serious impact where the money was already spent in fiscal 20. If you know what I mean, for, I, for I salaries and for I mean for people and for expenses, so that's a problem. We're s certainly hoping with the 2021 budget that uh, an ample overlay set aside is uh, built into that budget. Well, I would hope so too. But what I'm saying now is that since that money was used and then not set aside in fiscal 20's budget, that money is now taken up by being used for uh, personnel and expenses. So going forward now, we got to come up with $200,000 against reducing the tax levy by that amount, which is going to have an effect on the budget. All right? Uh, I'm, I, I'm going to reserve my comment. I want to, I, I'm not sure how much we've pulled out in the past so the town is, is pulled out. 225000 That's what you did before that, two years before that. So we, we talked a little bit internally about uh, a, uh, an overlay policy now with the consolidated overlay account that was implemented several years ago. Uh, a lot of towns are setting kind of a, 
year-to-year -year running balance, target balance that we're running, uh, needing to uh, set aside and keep in reserves for actual assessors' uh, um, abatements and exemptions and such. Um, I don't disagree with it. I don't disagree with what you just said. But the selectmen decided to spend that money that was normally set aside for overlay mm. to balance their budget, which means that going into next year's budget, if you're asking for two hundred thousand dollars, it, it, it just that's two hundred thousand dollars that comes out of the tax levy that yes. we just talked about. Yes, yes, and that's going to be a problem. I think we're on the same page. On that. I, I, I know we're on the same <laughs> yeah. page, but uh, you know yeah. they shouldn't have spent it. I mean, they should have spent it on one-time items instead of spending it on salaries and expenses. Yeah. And like they create should, a structural deficit. Yeah, you, you created a structural deficit. Now, that's yeah. just one problem. There's other problems too. So. Just so you know, John, Agreed. that's a problem. I, I hear yeah. what you're saying. Um, prior to becoming a selectman, I was on the Board of Assessors, too, and I can stand with John on that one, that it wasn't a unanimous decision to do exactly that. So um, we need to be very mindful. Now, I know that uh, uh, Town Account Todd insisted that the additional 51000 I believe, he has put aside for the overlay in the tax recap. I assume you're aware of that? Yes, yes. Okay. So I mean, that's a start, but we're going to have to come up with at least another $150,000 if we want to continue with that trend. Hmm. So let's not everybody get excited when we have to cut the budget, $150,000. They put it, put it in an overlay. Heard. Right? <laughs> Don't it's a problem. Agree. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's 522. Okay. 522, our next hearing isn't until 530, so uh, let's see. Maybe we can take something out of order. Maybe uh, number six. Um... How about we do number 11? That shouldn't be too, too bad. Is that okay with you, Rich? You got that one? 11 you want to do? Yeah. Okay. So, um... So this is to schedule December selectman meeting dates and times. So the proposed dates that we have right now is Monday, December 9th, which is two weeks from today, and then Monday, December 30th. Um, I know that's right before the holiday, um, but that's just in case I'd like to do that, just in case we have any licenses that come in late that's fine. to catch anything up. Um, and of course, the week before, that's the week of Christmas, so I would rather not meet that week because people start traveling. Um, so if those dates are okay with you, do you want to say 6 o'clock or get... Well, the, the last time we, we discussed this, we talked about that if we were going to start at 6.30, you know, as an okay. example, I don't know, just to throw this out. Yeah. And, yeah. and if we had an executive session, we could start at 6 o'clock so we don't have to do it at the end of the meeting. Okay. And what I would suggest is that if we ask the police chief if we could use the conference room next door, mm -hmm. that way there we won't session. have to ask people to to leave the room while we're in executive session. So okay. I don't know, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with that. Sometimes executive sessions can run long. We'll have to, you know, those are usually individually kind of planned anyways. But um, I'm okay with 6.30. Does that work? 6.30? Okay. Yeah. Maureen, good? Good for me. Okay. Tracy, good. Lorraine, everybody. Okay, so next two meetings will be Monday, December 9th at 6.30 here at the police station and Monday, December 30th here again at 6.30. Everyone good with that? Yep. Okay. Madam Chair, I know there was some discussion about going out even further. I didn't know if you guys were interested in even bringing up January at this point. Um, to, Fine with me. Yeah, I wouldn't mind putting at least one or two 
in January for planning purposes. So two weeks from the 30th is the 13th. And the 27th. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's 113 again, 630. And then 127. Okay. And uh, Madam Chair. Yep. I think we also talked about putting it out on the calendar, even though we don't have the agendas available, right? Yep, and Lorraine and um, Lillian were working out a schedule um, on how the calendar works, because as uh, Tracy had mentioned, we have some kind of inflexibility on the way that calendar exists, okay. but we're going to try to do a little work around. Or right, an, an announcement. We'll go out and yep. use an announcement. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, what time do we have now? 26. 26. Anything else? We could probably do the holiday schedule, I think. Yep, number, what's that, 16? 14. Uh, 14. Yep. So, the proposed holidays for 2020 are as follows. January 1st, New Year's Day. January 20th, Martin Luther King. February 17th, President's Day. April 20th, Patriot's Day. May 25th, Memorial. July 3rd, an observance of Independence Day. September 7th, Labor Day. October 12th, Columbus Day. November 11th, Veterans Day. November 26th, Thanksgiving. November 27th, day after Thanksgiving. December 24th, Christmas Eve Day. December 25th, Christmas Day. Any I'll make a motion to approve the, sched the schedule as presented. Okay. Second. Any conversation? I'm all set. Me too. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 27. 27. <laughs> <laughs> Zipping right along. Uh, you guys do six. We did this. Board of Selectmen announcements. Do you have any announcements? I don't really. Well, we, we had them here, and I, I think Tracy put this is our first, okay. first so, shot at this. Yeah, so do we just want to wait a couple of minutes and then just do that? Um, uh, we can do that. Yeah, what okay. time is it right now? 527. <laughs> uh, do we want to have uh, the discussion about the scheduling selectmen's offices? Sure, let's do that. We can do that. So. And at your last meeting, the board discussed holding office hours at the Senior Center. Uh, anytime between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. on Tuesdays or Fridays 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. with the exception of the third Friday morning of the month from 9.45 to 11. Uh, they do have the cafe for the seniors there on Fridays, 8.30 to 12, so there would be people there. I don't know if Tuesday or Friday works better for... Um, Either day is okay with me. I don't know, what, whatever you prefer. Yeah, and I think we said, like, each selectman would do one... Once. One yeah, one. and then, you know, we could fill in as needed if someone... Sick. Um I would say probably Fridays because we do have some folks there anyways. Okay. Does that... Is that okay? Sure. For you? Okay. So do we have to like officially motion this in or can we just scheduling? Well, just kind of I guess I'll make a motion that the uh, selectmen have office hours at the senior center on uh, one Friday a month, right? Oh, we're not doing it every week. Um, I think one Friday a month should be good. Okay. We can start uh, with that. You can make the motion to say at least. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, at least, yeah. all right, thank Would you. Would you like to set a week so that Kelly has an idea? Um, Either like this, the second or the fourth week of fourth Friday of the month. Let's see. Uh, Do we know when uh, Representative Worrell and Senator Rodericks are there? What week they're there? Is it? I think it's the third, isn't it? Thursday or something? Yeah, second. I don't believe they're there on Fridays. Yeah. I would suggest the uh, third, I'm looking at the calendar here for the next six months. I think that's the thing that she has going on on the third. Yeah. The third Friday oh, morning. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So. Um, 
I guess we could do the second. Yeah, that okay. works. Yep. So you want to do the second Friday yep. of each month? Yep. Okay. What second time? Friday from? I guess we'll be there at 8.30. I don't know. Wow, well, me. <laughs> too early for you? <laughs> I don't care what time. You um, want to make it a little why later? Why don't we just say like 9 to... 10. Yeah, that's good. And then if there's people there, the cafe goes on till 12, so... Okay. Okay, so... Uh, who wants to do the first to month? Uh, when are we going to... The first month will be January? December. Oh, December. Okay. So... Um, I can do the first month. Okay. All right. Yep. So the uh, first month. That's the second. Is that right? Thirteenth. Thirteenth. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion, right? Aye. 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 Okay. You made it. All right, we made it. Okay, so 531, um, we have a meeting with Mark Walters to discuss the 2020 Patriot Half Triathlon and 2020 Cranberry Trifest. I'm Mark Walter with Sun Multi Sport Events. Um, I live in Westwood, Massachusetts, and I'm here at the request of the selectmen to discuss our events uh, next year, which uh, one takes is based right here in Lakeville, and the other passes through Lakeville. Um, I uh, I didn't know if the we, should I just discuss present the plans for this year and what we're kind of doing differently. Is I don't know if there was any specific questions or just um. presenting. Yeah, if you want to just give us a brief description sure. of what if, what you've done in the past. Sure. And, you okay. Know. So uh, I'll start with the first race, which is on uh, Saturday, June 20th. Uh, I believe this will be the 14th year of this event, uh, which is a triathlon, which has uh, athletes swim, bike, and then run. Uh, it's based at Cathedral Camp in East Freetown. Um, that's where the swim is. Uh, the bike course uh, comes through Lakeville, but no, no part of the run course comes through Lakeville. Um, uh, we have utilized the same course um, probably for the last maybe nine or ten years for a long time, um, but uh, there have been, you know, I've worked very closely with uh, Lieutenant Sean Joyce from the police department, um, and, you know, he's expressed to me that there were definitely, you know, there's always some congestion because it's, you know, bikes and cars and all, and, you know, he expressed to me, you know, concern about uh, that uh, after this past year's race. So for the coming year, um, I've made... Uh, fairly significant changes, at least as it relates to Lakeville. Um, so the new course plan, I don't know if, if you'd like, I can review the previous course plan, but the new course plan will have cyclists coming uh, from Freetown up County Road, make a right on Highland, down to Bedford Street, make a right on Bedford, and then straight down to Long Point Road. Um, they will only be coming through one time. Uh, historically, this has been a two-loop course, which meant cyclists came through Lakeville twice. Um, historically, and, and over the 56-mile course, essentially 30 miles, uh, close to 30 miles, came through Lakeville, and that had cyclists coming through from about 7.30 to around 12.30. The new course essentially only utilizes about 10 miles of Lakeville roads, so they'll be coming through from about 7.30 until about 10, is my estimate. So um, the impact on the town should be notably less. Um, any questions about that? How many participants? Uh, we usually have about 700. 700, yeah. For both or for? Both for the one in June. The one in June. Yes. Okay. Okay, and I, I looked at your website, and I'm, I may be wrong, but the cost to participate in that is uh, two eighty. Two eighty. Yeah, well, it's at two eighty yeah. to two four four twenty five. Well, the four twenty five is like a three race package that includes this that race and two others. Okay, so it's about three hundred dollars. Okay. Um, I got a question for you. You're not a nonprofit, right? No. This is for. A business profit to make to make money. Yes, I, mean, I, I do 
try to give back and do give back. I made donations to the town. I also work with well numerous volunteer groups, but yes, I am a for-profit business. Okay. And how much did you donate to the town last year for this one? Uh, the donation to the library was $500. $500. Okay. Um, um, this, oh, I'm sorry. The, I just want to check the date because last year I know um, you're not going by the gymnastics the gymnastics place but right. i just want to be sure if there's any place i don't even may not even know about that is um that could have that kind of a same thing you know we're not going by any other dance school or any other i no just, I, I mean i'm looking at this now for yeah, the first time not sorry that, uh, not that I'm aware of. I mean, uh, um, okay. we've been on County Road before. Um, yeah. Highlands new, so I'm not aware of. I've been up and down it. I've. I yeah, I don't it. think um, there's anything really until you get to the church at the end. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm sorry, Rich. That's okay. Uh, I looked at all your events that you have coming for for uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all of those events. There's uh, one. Two, I think there's at least four, maybe five, and none of those events use any other town roads. Uh, they all use farms for oh, the, right. so for the runs, so they don't use town roads at all. The trail races do not. I mean, there's limited use of roads, very limited. So some of them there's, there's some being proposed. This is the first one, and then there's two others that are being proposed yes. is that you're asking to use our roads three times. Correct. Where these other ones, you don't ask them to use any of the roads. Because they're different. They're running trail running events. Okay. Uh, I have a concern about that. I okay. think that, uh, you know, uh, especially, you know, $500, you know, for the town to donate to the library is nothing when you're potentially going to make at least 20000 on this. Yeah, I mean, um, yes, again, I do work with, we end up giving probably, quote, uh, I don't want to misquote, but we do work with the Aponiquit Boosters, and, you know, I do try to engage with the community to help, uh, in, in, you know, volunteers on making a donation, but I, I understand your perspective. Well, I mean, it's just that I, I know that uh, in talking to the police chief and mm -hmm. talking to the lieutenant, mm -hmm. that there's been a lot more problems over the last four years having to do with people, you know, participating, not paying attention on what's going on in that race. And it's not, this is the first one, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about the second one. And I understand you changed the route, and the route is better mm -hmm. than it was in the past. Mm -hmm. But there's still a major concern, especially coming down um, Highland Road, County Street, Highland Road, and getting on 105, mm -hmm. which is a very dangerous you know, road here in town, it's all curves and so forth, and then going down Long Point Road. Mm -hmm. So I have a concern about that, you mm -hmm. know, and that's just one of them. Okay. The other one I think is even worse when we haven't talked about that, that route. So I, I would like to talk to the police chief about this before I'm going to vote on it because okay. I just got this information okay. yeah. um, yesterday. Okay. okay. I didn't have it before. Okay. yesterday so I haven't had a chance to talk to the chief and I'd like to discuss it with the chief yeah I'd like to um, actually have as many folks to talk to as many folks too I know that there were some you know big concerns going into the one in August I know that there was still at least one folk one person who filed a complaint I think you had did you, I don't know, what are they, referees or something Official, on the officials? officials. Mm -hmm. um, and I did, I do know that a couple people said they saw whatever, but they saw the bikers still riding for a cross, um, even though we did have the officials. So I really would like to get, you know, um, some conversation too with our own folks, the either the police chief or Lieutenant Joyce, so that we can get a sense of how they they feel. Um, also, going back to the volunteers, what is it that are you giving them community hours? Is that what it is? The no, volunteers. I'm, I give them a donation. I oh. can make a donation. Okay, so you make a donation to those organizations yes. too. Yes. Okay. Um, which. The Pontiac boosters. The boosters. 
Uh, the, I work with the Fair Haven After Prom Committee. Um, you know, I also do a, a Veterans Day uh, program where I donate um, $25 of every you know, race entry received uh, during a period. Uh, so that went to Homes for Our Troops in Taunton. Um, uh, what are some of the other groups? I mean, there's uh, the Middleborough Demolay. I've worked with them for many years. Um, the uh, uh, um, Whitman Food Pantry uh, through St. Vincent's de Paul, and they're out of um, uh, Whitman, uh, so they okay. they help. So. Um, and do you also give anything to our Parks Department for the, do you well, rent? For, uh, for 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 the cranberry, right? Yes, for the for race the here. Yes, okay. there's All that. Right, sorry, and, I'm just um, getting confused. Right. Okay, okay. Yes, yeah, so I right. was just those groups. I was just mentioning the one for the yeah race, race the other here. one. Okay. Any other questions on? Not on this one. Not on this one. Okay. okay. So I'd like to table this one till we can talk. Do you want to? No, that's fine. Um, and we'll have you come back again. I mean, I'm sure you want to be able to start doing your scheduling, but I, you know, I think that enough things have happened, and there's been enough conversations between all the parties that maybe we need to get everyone in the same room and. Um, and have a talk, so we'll definitely have you come back, but we'll have is, to do our own. Is there a scenario where, for example, the race here at Ted Williams Camp is not allowed to go forward? Um, I do I, want to talk about that one now. Yeah, I mean, we can and talk about that one, too. Um, I, um, <clears throat> I am very concerned about the, uh, the course on this race. So, okay. uh, so there's uh, yeah, two races. Uh, we have a race on Saturday and a race on Sunday. Right. And then we have the bike and run courses. So I, I have them labeled, with, which uh, maybe it's all of them. Uh, is one in particular? Well, where I have a concern, and I think a lot of the problems that you know, I saw, mm -hmm. you know, and I happen to live on Old Pot House Road, I don't have any objection on coming through my neighborhood. Okay. Where the problem is, is the corner of Precinct Street and then you go, I'm kind of appreciating that you turn up Pickens. Yes. Then you turn down Old Powder House right. Road. Right. There's nothing worse than coming down Precinct Street towards Old Powder House right. Road. Then you go through the neighborhood and you come back through the neighborhood. Right. Right? So there's double things going on. And I know, yeah, I read so, in here, you said there wasn't people that crossed over. There was. Well, I think you may. So when. For the race in June, they would come down the hill and make the right onto Old Powerhouse. That does not happen at the race in August. The race in August, they, they leave Ted Williams, they go down Pickens, they make the right on Precinct, as you described, and left on Old Powerhouse. So they're that, uh, oh, maybe if you get into the runners. Maybe that's yeah. cause, so that is what was addressed with the new run, proposed run course to eliminate that overflow, the overlap mm -hmm. in 20, for 2020. You mean the, the uh, cranberry one? Yes. Well, it's still going through the neighborhood, right? right? So yeah. So this, so that is for our Saturday race. Yeah. And that is the bike course. Yeah. And the so the run leaves, and then here's the old old powder house in here. So there's no overlap between this right. bike course and that run course. Okay. Um, I think it's I, I I think that's the most dangerous one. I've seen people fall. I've seen somebody get hit, you know. By a car? By a car. And, you know, and one of the other problems I have, which we need to talk to the police chief about, is that the officers, the detail officers that are being hired, uh, we don't have enough officers to cover this event. And a lot of them are coming from the sheriff's office and so forth, and they're not paying attention as to what's going on with this race. Mm -hmm. You know, especially at those two intersections at, at Precinct and Pickens and Pickens and Old Potter House Road. Mm -hmm. So I have a concern about that, that we need to talk to the police chief about that too. Okay. Yeah, I now, think Unfortunately, the, he's not here. Uh, right. Either one could make it tonight, from what I understand. Um, I think it's the bike part that comes by my house, but I'm trying to, I don't see my street on here specifically, but it goes by Racecourse Road, so I'm assuming this is South Kingman Street right here. Here, and I know that's where the road in some parts does get wider 
and I actually saw people myself drive, riding on the bike, three and four people across. And then part of that road, there's a curve, and it gets very narrow at the curve. And I don't even like to walk there, never mind having bikers. And like I said, I do know people mentioned to me that they saw the officials on the course, which I think is great. Um, but even with the officials on the course, we saw people still riding. I, and I don't know. I don't know if I, if you can find people or I, I mean, I don't I don't know. I don't know how to run a race. But all I know is I just don't want anyone getting hurt. Sure. You know, um, that's really what it's what it's about. No, I, I mean, I, I, I don't either. I mean, I think um, the, you know, Races here, elsewhere, you know, it is a certainly a risk of this of, of competition. Uh, people on bikes on you know recreational ride. I totally understand and appreciate your perspective that you know yeah. now you got hundreds of people and and you know these are not closed course uh, cl closed courses without traffic, um, which is you know why we do numerous things to try to prepare people um, with signage, pre-event communications. Um, you know we have posted on the Lakeville Facebook page you know we, we do postcard mailings to yep. try to make people aware so you know we do in, uh, implement numerous things to try to make people aware to try to ensure the athletes are um, you know exercising caution where appropriate and you know I, I understand you know some throw caution to the wind um, and and then there's still you know I think where you know the whole riding multiple across seems to be Especially when it's like an up, up and hill, um, because they're going slower. Um, yeah. But yes, I, I'm familiar with that. Um, okay, and I mean, I've always said that I like seeing the race because you know it inspires people. It's you know it's a it's a good thing. But again, from when you started a long time ago, there's so many more people in Lakeville, so many mm -hmm. more houses. There's more developments even you know mm -hmm. along the the route. Did. Is this the same route, the bike route, or has this been changed? So for the Cranberry, the race at Ted Williams, yeah. the bike courses for both Saturday and Sunday were not changed from last year. Okay. What has changed uh, is the run course on Sunday to eliminate the overlap that we were having of bikers and runners um, on um, Pickens and then coming down to making the left on Precinct. Okay. Um, I thought there was a recommendation made by Lieutenant Joyce that I don't know if you, is that what prompted your change? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think there was... I don't know if that, he put it in writing. I don't know if it was just a suggestion after the race. Um, I... I kind of forget. I mean, I think it might have just been that concern. Well, yeah, I, Sean was expressing his concern, continued concern yeah. about that. So then that's when I committed to him okay. that I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it yeah. um, and, you know, eliminate that overlap. So he, okay. yeah, he's seen, he, he has uh, approved the course that um, you have. This before. one? Yes. Okay. And we've talked, you know, we haven't finalized the police detail plan, but we certainly talked about where those will go and... Okay. And how many participants in that event, this event? The second uh, one. Uh, the second one kind of fluctuates, but it's generally more around four to 500 uh, each Both day. Days, each each day. day? Yes. Okay. Um, you say you make a donation to the park for the use. What was the donation? For So for the second event, uh, the event at Cranberry, uh, uh, Ted Cranberry, Williams, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's a fee. Uh, they, uh, I'm basically charged about $5 per, I'm charged $5 per registrant. So we end up registering like over 1,000, you know, when uh, all said and done, but four or 500 end up showing up to race. So it's like five grand? It ends up being about five to $6,000 plus, you know, the rental fee and, you know, there's other costs that come in, but that's, I've, uh, the head of the, I mean, you could certainly speak to um, Mike with the, uh, the Parks Department. Mike He's, Nolan. Mike Nolan, yes. And hey, what's the rental fee? Do you know? Yeah, it's like another thousand. Okay. Thank you. The last question I have for now is uh, do you provide uh, liability insurance to the town? Yes. The town, there's always a certificate of insurance that lists the okay, town is how much is insured. That? Uh, I forget off the top of my head. It's like, like 
a million individual and then like two million aggregate, it's generally considered pretty good. But I, I you know, I don't know what your perspective okay. is on that. Okay. That's all the questions I have right Yeah. Um, I really would like um, for us to talk to our own folks. I wish someone could have been here, including from the Parks Department. So um, maybe we can just table this. Do you think the next meeting yeah, would be okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so hopefully, can you make it back? I think the next uh, meeting is yes. tell me December 9th. Yeah, December on the 9th. 9th. So. Okay. Okay. Um, the only thing, well, I guess the last thing I'd say is, um, I, you know, I know I'm not a nonprofit, um, but, you know, I, I always try to run a very uh, high quality event, which takes a lot of consideration into the safety factors. Again, I recognize there are some uh, risks. Um, I think, you know, I'm. In, I'm an uh, entrepreneur trying to support my family doing something that I love, which is putting on events. So, uh, you know, I have a family and kids in college, you know, so I, I know I'm not a nonprofit, but I'm trying to, you yep. know, uh, make a living at this. So if, you know, I just yep. thought that's And um, just note. for selecting the camera who wasn't here over the summer, we had a last minute change last summer. We asked um, Mr. Walters to change the time because of the triple E and he was very accommodating. Okay. Um, you know, with that whole thing, I think we went a little later, half hour later or something, Correct. so we wouldn't have folks arriving when the midnight mosquitoes were still out or the night mosquitoes. Right. So that we didn't have any people, sh anybody showing up when it wasn't daylight. Right. Right. So, um, okay. So we're going to table probably. Well, till I, the I would, I would, I would ask. You know, nothing to do with him. Yeah. His letter is dated October seventeenth, and why is this just getting onto the agenda? Um. The fan right. is down. Uh, okay. I think that was an internal issue. Okay. In yeah. fairness to Mr. Walter. So I mean, Chair. We, <laughs> we had we had um, a couple of large meetings that were very top heavy and so um, when I spoke to Mark he agreed to um, put it off until November when we could schedule them in. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. So we will see you on the ninth. December ninth. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Would you vote to table it also? Do you want to vote to table it? I'll entertain a motion to table. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, 545 with William Goldsmith to discuss a section of Holland Road for PMC Kids Ride on June 14th, 2020. Hey. So, hey, Rich, how are you? Thank you for allowing me to be here this evening. So I'm here because I organized an event called Cranberry Country PMC Kids Ride. But the last five years we've done it at Oak. <laughs> last five years we've done it at Oak Point. Um, okay. But because of the success of last year's ride, we are limited in parking there, and so we are looking to have a new venue to have the ride. And I've spoken. Rick Medeiros has been a. Uh, early advocate for the ride when we first started it and allowed me to speak to the schools, to the kids, to promote it. Um, but now that, you know, Aponica just seems to be a really good location for it because of all the parking. Mm -hmm. And it would also be a very safe area because of the way I have copies of the routes if you don't have them. I don't know if you have them with you. Oh, well, we, we go. Yeah. There. Um, there. They're attached. Yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> we want to close off the road that is going, is it, is it how long? I can't remember, is it Freetown Street? I can't remember Freetown which way. Freetown Street, Freetown Street. Street. Yeah. We're um, hoping to um, close off that road between, the, you know, between the school, the drive, just past the driveways, yep. going up to the schools, so we can have a continuous loop where the kids can ride um, without having to worry about traffic. I had spoken with Lieutenant Joyce, and he had signed off on the route thinking that it would not be difficult to do that because Bell's Brook, I guess, can be used as a detour. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I wasn't even aware of that, but I was thankful for it. Um, so he asked me, you know, I know that I had to come and speak with you all. Uh, the school has, I've spoken with Mr. Medeiros has signed off on it. Um, Diane Zapiga and Jim Cabuccio, who I've spoken with, have both uh, signed off on the school being used for it on June 14th uh, of next year. Um, now it's just that they had asked, obviously, that I had to come to the 
to the selectmen and you know get the approval that it would be okay to hold the event there. So. Um, what is the actual time the road is going to be closed? Well, it says 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. 7, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. is I'll probably be there later because of cleanup. I will be later because of cleanup. The actual road closing will probably in, Lieutenant Joyce and I have to okay. work out the specific details of it exactly, but probably 9.30 or 11.30, somewhere in that vicinity, you know, so plus or minus hours. half an hour, a couple yeah. hours. Yeah. It's going to be probably, because what happens is the way the day works is we get there at 7 o'clock, we start setting everything up. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to have a large turnout. So we used to do rider registration at about nine o'clock. A lot of kids will ride register online. Yeah. But we'll have people come the day of the event. Sure. So what will happen is from nine to ten normally we would do registration, but last year we did eight thirty to nine to ten. We're gonna go I'm probably gonna do eight to ten to really get every give everybody a chance to get registered. Um, and then we'll have the ride. I'm thinking it'll probably be an hour and a half thereabouts because then we have to transition to the party that we have for the kids after that so that's what we do it's probably about two maybe it might be two and a half hours okay but we're not talking all day no okay. no absolutely not <laughs> all right um <clears throat> any questions well it, you know just a comment uh bill has done a tremendous job on this uh, pmc Kids ride, kids ride, and last year he raised over a hundred thousand dollars for cancer research. A hundred percent of the money raised all goes to cancer research. What happens is we raise. I I go out to the community and ask the business owners if they'll donate because what happens is that covers the expense of the party, but all of the money raised by the children, one hundred percent of every dime of every penny, goes to the Dana Farmer Foods Jimmy Fund, and as Rich says, because we. Yeah. Um, we, we raised a total gross of over 100000 of which 96000 was went straight to the Dana because that's what the kids had raised. Yeah. Yep. Um, so in the last five years, we've raised over, I want to say, over 224000 So my goal is to increase the number of kids that participate, and the money will come. Yeah. The money will mm -hmm. come if we get the kids. My biggest thing is I want to teach the kids that they can make a difference and empower sure. them. Because mm -hmm. once they once they have that, once they know that, there's, you, you don't know where they take that. Yeah. And um, we, when you say kids, two to 16? It's two to 16. Okay. So we have, we have multiple, well, in the past we've had uh, three courses. Um, at the school we'll have two courses. Um, if the, when you look at the loop that we've kind of designed, it ends up being about two miles um, in a complete loop. So we'll have kids that are comfortable on bikes, whether it be training wheels or, or, or yeah. not, mm -hmm. they can mm -hmm. ride that. For the real little kids, we'll set up a separate course where they can Just do their thing do their, and you know, yeah. do like a little loop. Um, but the big thing is, you know, we hear a big party for them, but it's very mm -hmm. important that they learn it. Yeah. They, they have to feel that sense of accomplishment okay. instead of just having something given to them. Okay. Um, anything else? I'm, no, I'm all set. I'm pretty much all set, so I'll entertain I'll, a motion. I'll make a motion to, um, let me see now, to close Howland Road to, I think it's Bellsbrook. Yeah, Seth. Seth said it's at Bellsbrook. I guess we, when you're looking at, the, if you're looking at the high school and you look at the middle school, the he would close it further off. I guess that's Bellsbrook, right? right? It goes yeah. down yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And then what he would do is where the intersection, as you're coming up to the, that intersection to go into the high school and, and graze, he would shut it off but still allow, there would the still be the allow of the traffic way. to go that yeah. way. Yeah. Um, yep. And he said he thought that there was enough room to have that yep. happen without problems. Actually, as long as our <laughs> superintendent of streets is here, do you have any questions on that closure? Does the chief know about the closure of the police? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I spoke with uh, Lieutenant Joyce about it, and he, was, okay. he had approved it. And I, I talked to Matt uh, about it as well. Because well, I've had a hard time trying to close the roads myself um, for projects. <laughs> but, uh, I have no issue with it. Okay. 
So uh, I'll entertain. I mean, I'll make a motion that uh, we close off a portion of Holland Road for approximately two and a half hours. Bill. Yeah, I, 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 I'll talk to Seth and we'll work out all the dynamics of exactly. But I can't imagine. I mean, should I say three hours just to be safe? Um, I would say three hours. Okay, just we'll to say just to be three safe. hours. Yeah, a three-hour window, whatever that yeah, window and, and, is. And um, this this section of the road is from the intersection. It's in it's in uh, yeah. Sean Joyce's email. Uh, this. Uh, this roadway of the intersection of Freetown Street to Sears Island Road. Okay. See that uh, there? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And just as, as a matter of, just so I'm, I don't know if this has to be covered or not, you, does you, we also get the approval, you guys are co you're comfortable with us obviously using the school facilities, given that they've signed off on and all that other oh, yeah. stuff? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I second your okay. motion. <clears throat> and the only other thing that I would like to add is, um, I don't know what kind of plan you have in place to, I know with some of the other race stuff, they do send postcards to the residents. I don't know if that's. I've spoken with Lieutenant Joyce about that. Um, he will, we talked about posting, we have a Facebook event page. Um, this the police station has, I guess, their own page that they would also post notification. Okay. Potentially, uh, they may send out a letter to uh, people living. That well, might be there is those impact, houses right, right the there ones that are on directly that street. Impacted. He said he might mention sending out a letter. He yeah, send out a letter I think we would have to do Notifying them of that event. Um, uh, and, of course, you know, if someone needs to get out, we'll right. <laughs> they'll be able to get out. We're not right, going right. to allow there someone is, to get out. I don't out. know if it's three houses or four houses right across the street from the high school right there yeah. that I, you It know, would not be a problem and, for and allowing would, those people to yeah, get out. Yeah, of course, yeah, emergency vehicles, I would think that you're going to have... You know, whatever. Um, to, to give you some idea, I think you've been at a couple of these events. Um, we've had, uh, we have a lot of volunteers. So we're going to get, I think it's maybe two or three details. I think, I'm not, I think maybe two, I think, I think maybe three. Said, uh, I think yeah. he said three. Yeah. Uh, two at one stop and one at another. Yeah. Um, but I will probably have between 150 and 200 volunteers that day. Mm -hmm. And a number of them will be on the course. Um, as well as assisting in other areas of the event. Um, but rider safety is my paramount concern. Yeah. These I, I'm sure. an adult rider in the PMC, so I'm at a panic risk. Sure, I know. You and, know. and I mean, it is, um, I just, those folks who are right there, yeah. so it's happening right in front of their house, right? You know, I would just, I just want to make sure that they know. I don't know if we can send a notice or something. Can you clarify who should send the letter? Yeah. What do I, you think? I think, I think we... that Sean said he would send He's something gonna do it. out. Okay. He, he mentioned about sending. And now, I don't want to speak for him, okay? Right. So please talk to him. I don't want to assume anything. Okay. But I, th I think that was the case. Um, Usually what they do is they send out a postcard, which is pretty inexpensive to do now. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and okay. Just, they can easily get the streets and automatically print them. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, I, I'm excited to... To have it there. My kids go to school. Like I mean, we live in Middleborough. Our kids go to school like through, through school choice. So oh, okay. it's kind yeah. of cool to have it. Yeah. In the Lakeville. Okay. So motions made. I've seconded. Um, the only thing I would ask Maureen to just coordinate with Sean who that if they're going to send the letter or that way we're sure those. Got it. Especially those four. I think it's four houses. It might be three and a half. I don't know what. I'm okay. hoping they'll come out and cheer the kids up. They probably, they probably will. I'm going to put it on my calendar. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks, Pam. Thank set. you very Thank much. You. Have a wonderful and happy Thanksgiving. You too. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, the deputy chief ran in and ran out, right? Yes, he had to go to an accident. Okay. So, we're going to... Go to six fifteen. Can't do it. He's going to be a while. Yeah. Um, so it was an accident. I mean, is the is the person here? Or no. No, he's not. I mean, I don't see why we can't do that. Okay, I'll um, I'll make a motion to appoint Reed Anderson, contingent upon the successful completion of the department approved physical examination, physical abilities test, and a one year probationary period. Um, I will 
second that, but I will um, mention that he's already passed the physical exam, so it's only the physical abilities test in the one-year probationary period. Correct? Uh, okay. Well, we probably should still have it on the record to make sure that okay. he's been appointed. So. Okay. So, motion stands. Motion stands. So, all those in favor? All right. Aye. Does anyone have Will's number so he doesn't have to come back? Yeah. Um, all right, so we still have a couple minutes before the 6.15. 10 minutes. Um, if you want. Sure, let's do that. So we're going to skip to uh, six. number six, mm -hmm. Board of Selectmen announcements. Do you want to do this? I don't care. I mean, yeah, if you want. You know, we decided at the last meeting that what we're going to try to do is, is have uh, the board announce uh, key events that are happening in town, not only including community events, but there may be an important meeting coming up with the planning board or, or the board of appeals. And so we know of um, four different events right now that are coming up that we hope uh, everybody will support. I know that uh, Tracy's at, they're on the website, but I think that, you know, people are watching us. Some of them are, some of them aren't. <laughs> uh, so the first one is the Aponic Caboose's Christmas tree and wreath sale is on November 29th and November 30th at the Lakeville Townhouse, which is up on the corner that way. The Friends of the Lakeville Library will be hosting a holiday open house on December 7th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Lakeville Library. The Lakeville Lions Club tree lighting ceremony is on December 7th at 6 p.m. at the Lions Club House at 170 Main Street. Uh, Santa will be available to take pictures with no charge. Santa. The Lakeville Arts Council is holding all gl all that glitters, a unique shopping opportunity on December 13th from 6 to 8 p.m. and December 14th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Loon Lodge, Loon Pond Lodge at Ted Williams Camp. There will be musical, entertainment, cash bar, and Sanders is going to make a parents of that one, too, on Saturday between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Okay. Um, I would suggest in the, in the future, uh, Tony, that, you know, we put these announcements right up front. Sure. And that way they're, you know, they're not kind of in the middle of everything. Put them right in. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. I was going to bring that up under old business, but maybe we can, because we had these things scheduled, so maybe we can just put those things all at the beginning. Right. Yeah, that'll make it... Yeah. Um, easier. Um, okay. Okay. All right. What else we got here? Yeah. 608. Okay. So, Okay. You want to talk about number eight? Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, one of the other things that we decided was to, um, to give the public an opportunity to come in and ask the board something that, uh, uh, in case they had a question or a concern, uh, we may not necessarily address this that issue at the meeting, but it would at least give them a public forum uh, to bring uh, up anything they want to talk about. And, you know, we we'll probably set aside 10 minutes, you know, for every meeting or whatever. And uh, I don't think there's anybody out here that... You got anything, Brian? I feel like I should say something. Sure. Right ahead. We know that the first meeting this is happening, so as, as people see this and get more involved, that uh, you know. All right. Well, you know. Oh, you okay? He's going to ask a question. All right, um, Brian Dale, this Pond, uh, this Pond Drive. Um, really happy to see the office hours coming. I think that's you know another great way for you guys to get in touch with the community. Um, I think something that might be helpful is also to kind of set ground rules and expectations for those. So in case you get somebody coming in kind of really hot to trot on an issue, they understand what you're there for. You know, is it a conversation? Is it to try to get something on the agenda? I don't want folks to put you in a bad position and think just because they're coming in to say something that that means an action is going to be taken. Um, so whatever that format might be, a little set of rules on the web page, whatever. 
just to keep everybody well, kind I would of understanding. Think it's up to the individual board member yeah. that's going to be doing it to decide whether, yep. you know, okay. this becomes sort of something that's out of control. Sure. And you know, I think they need just need to control it. Yeah. Which is that's fine. a good comment. But, but just yep. yeah, it's yep. an overall. These are what the meeting minutes meetings are for, are for. and right. not for. Mm -hmm. Okay. But okay. thanks for doing those. Those are great. Yeah. Okay. Thank thanks, you. Brian. Mm -hmm. Sir, anything? You sure? Okay. So okay. Um, so. Okay. Six ten. Yeah. Six ten. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, what do we have on the formats, Madam Chair? Basically, I was just looking for some guidance on how you want the new meeting agenda set up. Okay. So sort of what we just started talking exactly. about. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna do um, number nine. So, like today, we started with the hearings because we had those sort of kind of scheduled, yeah, yeah prearranged from before. Um, so maybe we can do uh, probably board of selectmen announcements first, Rich. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then um, public in input public session. input session, and uh, then town administrators town report. administrators report, and then uh, we can. Is there, is there a reason why do we want to do the minutes up front? Get those over with. Yeah, we could do that up front. No. Mm -hmm. no. We, we typically put them there because at some meetings it's so long that by the time you get to the end of something, you want something that you, you know you don't have to really make a decision on. You just you know, work hard well, We can put them in the front. That's it doesn't fine. make any difference, but then you're going to have to do them anyways. You want to try to put them in the front? <laughs> Um, minutes, minutes. Yeah, let's put them yeah, in the front. Yeah, let's okay. try them in the front. We're making changes. Why not? Okay. Let's be daring. <laughs> um, can you just send that out just in an email? So, sure. <laughs> um, what we just said. <laughs> um, anything else? I think that's everything mm -hmm. that I we think talked everything about. Everything else falls into place, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, we got three minutes. Maybe you could go for number. Fifteen. Will you make it? No, fifteen is going to take a few minutes. Take a few minutes. Um, I guess we could do the voting and extended hours. Yeah, or we could do eighteen. They'll sign. You want to do the sign? Oh, yeah. okay. All right. We'll do number eighteen. So that is. Number 18, uh, request from the Lakeville Arts Council to place signs for All That Glitters event. So the board has received a request from the Lakeville Arts Council to place a two-foot by four-foot A-frame sign at the intersection of Precinct Street and Rhode Island Road. They have permission to place one at the Lions Club also. Um, and they're asking to have this event posted on the community sign as well. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I assume that you'll take care of the community sign? Yeah, it's on the schedule. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right, so we got that done. Two minutes. <laughs> All right, what else? Do we want to do an open space appointment? That shouldn't yeah, take long. We can do that. Okay, so agenda item number 19 request from the open space committee to appoint Donna Wabrek, Wabrek as a member of the open space committee. I apologize if I didn't say the name correctly. The open space committee has a vacancy for a member at large. So uh, Ms. Wabrek has sent in a letter of interest for the vacancy. Um, her, if okay. appointed, her expiration date would be July 31st, 2020. So moved. All those in favor? Uh, second. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Okay. Got that? Okay. 614. <laughs> 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 the next one's quick. The storage right permit. <laughs> ah, the storage yeah, permit. That. Want to do the storage permit? Uh, okay. I can't even find that one. 20. Number 20. 20. Request for renewal of temporary storage permit. We have received a request for renewal of a temporary storage permit from 19 Stetson Street. If approved, the permit would expire on December 3rd, 2020. Uh, what is 
is temporary me. Yeah. And... <laughs> well, he's had this permit for years. <laughs> um, for years? Probably since the last time you were on the board. Um, the oh temporary... It's called the temporary storage permit because that's what it's called under the bylaws. What is this storage thing used for? I believe he uses it to store tools. Tools. Is it a okay. shed? No, is it, it, no, it's not a shed. I'm not sure if it's a pod or if it's a similar um, thing for that, but he, he locks it and... Um, he what? He locks, locks it up because of his, his tools that are in there. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, there's the zoning enforcement officer... Okay with this? Yeah, he, he's fine with it. And Nate's tried um, for years to convince him to just apply for a shed permit and pay the forty dollars once. But um, Phil religiously, um, actually, I never have to chase him. He renews automatically, so um, he pays his twenty five dollars every year. Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion to renew the temporary storage permit for nineteen Stetson, Stetson Street to expire on December third, two thousand twenty. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. okay. Are we good? We're good. We're good. Okay. I made it. 615. Meet with Superintendent of Streets, Franklin Moniz. Moniz? No. I know he wants to be called Frank, so I'm just going to call him Frank. <laughs> um, regarding the following, so we have one, two, three, four things. Sanding of private roads, discuss a new job description for seasonal repair maintenance labor, discuss reclassifying emergency highway operator position, and review a bid for two three-sided metal buildings. What's your fancy? In order? Sure. Okay. Sanding of private roads is attached to the annual memo that goes out to the private associations in case the police or fire chiefs request the sanding of the private road safety reasons. Okay. So I would say all I changed on that was the pricing, and the pricing just reflects what we would pay. Um, so if I were to send one of my contractors there with a sander, that's the rate we would pay, and then the tonnage is the rate we pay for the salt and mag. Um, that being said, I would say this is more... I can't even see us ever really charging back because typically it's uh, it wouldn't be I, I would try not to anyway um, do any kind of actual sanding and, and plowing of the road more than what we've done in the past it's typically one pass to open it up to get the fire truck there or the police there and then sand our way back out and that's it so to charge that back it would be like 10 minutes and like maybe 30 pounds of salt. It would be such a minuscule thing. Um, I just don't want this to open up anything where if it becomes an elderly type area or something where, you know, maybe it it's, could be deemed um, a safety issue if their roads aren't plowed where we're in a position where we actually need to plow and open up the entire roads. Okay. I'm actually unaware of that. <clears throat> Is this for emergency purposes only or in general? You do it, make one pass and... I've only done it for, uh, since I've been here um, if the police call. But I've never, all we do is literally open a path, go back out. I've never had to actually, I guess in the past, so there has been times where we've actually had to plow entire roads um, because of an emergency. what was deemed a safety issue. Because if there were an issue there emergency vehicles wouldn't have been able to get there and they called it in in that case okay and these are on private, private associations <laughs> yep or streets that haven't been approved yet by the town or if it hasn't been approved it still would be considered private it's still considered a private okay um all right so the only change i made to it was just the pricing yeah. okay uh, all right um, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the uh any uh, private roads uh, on the letter did, uh, dated November 6, 2019, uh, with the, the new rates uh, as being proposed. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 
Madam Chair? Yes. Um, Franklin, I'll send it out to um, the associations. I have the mailing list. Oh, good. So I'll Thanks. get it out to them. Thank Could you, you um, put it on letterhead, though, and then scan it and send it back to me so it looks a little official? Sure. That'd be great. Thanks. Okay. Um, Am so I writing in with a <laughs> pen on it? <laughs> so the second thing is uh, discuss the new job description for seasonal repair and maintenance labor. Yep, so this job is, right now it's specifically for um, George Freights, who when I started he was basically acting um, superintendent, I guess you would say. Um, and then I've continued to use him since then, but he doesn't actually have a job description. Um, and I would say with his skill set and the fact that he has 30 plus years in the town and um, just what he's capable of doing, I, I felt that, you know, putting him at the uh, level six at top step is more than fair for someone of his capabilities. And I mean, I use him for pretty specific things such as like auto body work, painting, things like that. So he's doing um, very specific um, craftsman type jobs. And that's the basis of why we, me and Clarinda, uh this set this job description up for him. And this is only uh, part time? Yeah, whenever I, whenever, need, whenever I need him, basically, yeah. which is very, I mean, he still plows for me, but that wouldn't fall under that. That falls right. under something separate. Yeah. But um, that's really if I need a, some auto body down on a truck or things of that nature. He wouldn't be cutting grass or doing any of those type of things, specifically for, you know, craftsman right. type work. Okay. Um, you okay? Um, yeah. So we'll do each of them separately. Yeah. Um, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the revised, or is this new? Uh, this is new. New. Yeah. Yeah. New <laughs> seasonal repair and maintenance labor or highway department um, to level six. six and step five. Yep. <clears throat> Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the next one is reclassifying emergency highway operator position, AKA snowplow driver. Yep, so this is just a reclassification, putting it from a level eight to a level six and hopefully bringing in um, some highway operators for snow plowing. Right now we have zero. Uh, when I started, we had two guys doing this. Um, last year we lost one and couldn't replace them, so we were down to one. And this year I lost that that driver, um, and we haven't been able to fill those positions. I don't know for sure that raising up the price is going to bring them in or not, but I I definitely think it's more than a fair um, hourly rate to pay a guy to come in and plow. Okay. And, yeah. Yep. It's uh, it's a problem being competitive out there, especially in the private. You know, plowing, even the state, I mean, the state pays, you know, a lot of money. Yeah. And to have a few guys just to drive our trucks, yeah. you know, do the plowing is actually going to save us money by not having to go out and hire right. uh, drivers, uh, hiring plow companies to come in and plow the roads. Yeah, and I think actually um, Mr. Day <clears throat> had made a very valid point at a meeting when we discussed some of the other... Yeah, you did. Where yeah. if we can actually get more, more we people, it, the quicker we, the get quicker, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was um, a great point. So yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. You wanna? Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the job description for emergency highway operator. Uh, I don't see. It says oh, level eight. Uh, level eight. To level level six. six. Okay. Um, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And the last one is review the bid for two three-sided metal buildings. Uh, yeah, basically we only got one bid in. We've gone multiple times. Um, we have a certain individual that's already built two buildings for us, but for some reason he just can't come through um, with the quotes. But So I guess basically the, the amount they came in on this bid is way too high. Um, basically it puts me way over what I would uh, 
spend what I have available for my capital item, and it's overpriced for com comparable to the other buildings that I've gotten. Um, so we're basically back somewhat to the drawing board at this point. So we'll have to go back out um, to get more quotes. Uh, so do we have to we have to reject this bid, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Um. What what are we looking to put in this anyway? I'm just curious. Salt. Oh, okay. So that's going to replace the big salt shed we have now. Yeah. Um, with two small salt sheds, um, and then what it'll do is free up our large salt shed to be refurbished for dry storage. Okay. To be able to get some of our trucks and equipment out of the elements. Out of the elements. Um, okay. Prolong their life. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to reject this bid. Uh, from Collins Construction. From Collins Construction for the seventy-one thousand thirty dollars. So moved. Uh, second on that, and all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Thank you. Thank you guys. How's a new baby? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Look at that smile. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks you too. <clears throat> Now I guess we have no restrictions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go in order. It's seven. Yep. Town administrator's report. I may, Madam Chair. So um, I was asked at the last meeting um, to have every time we have a meeting to have a small report section in that meeting where I just let people generally know what's been going on in the town hall for the last few weeks. So uh, I wanted to talk about some things that we've got going on. Um, so in, uh, in the town clerk's office, um, we are beginning to start the process of codification or recodification of bylaws. It's been something that's been on the books for a while and something I guess uh, Lil had been asking for. Um, we're trying to match up our bylaws with the state's bylaw, uh, general laws that have changed over time. Um, sometimes we'll go in to research an issue where there'll be conflicting knowledge on the issue and we'll say, well, that's not what this bylaw says, but the law that it's pointing to says something different. Right. So we've had a bunch of those issues in the last couple months where yeah. we've seen some stuff that is just not making sense for, for the town. So this company comes in, um, not only do they clean it up um, they work with uh, the town clerk and uh, the planning board to do so, so it's a collaborative process. Um, they clean it up, uh, they make sure it's pointing to the right laws, and they put it in a searchable database. So we'll take that database and we'll be able to use it to make other people aware in town to be able to say, I want to search on anything to do with housing. And then all our bylaws that have to do with housing will pop mm. up and be a reference point for them. And, um, and it'll teach us going forward how we can also add that in. So it'll be something that not only are we fixing from the past, but we're having a future to going the right way. So. Uh, make sure Nate is involved in that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it is for the general bylaws of the town, but also the zoning. Correct. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's very important to have them yeah. both mm -hmm. because not only are the laws sometimes changed, Sometimes the language isn't mm -hmm. what we want it to be. It, it leaves a little bit too much for interpretation, or the wording is, you know, odd. Yep. So and they'll, they'll bring they, those kinds of things. Yep, and they'll clean it up, and that'll be, a, like I said, a collaborative effort. So we could have an interesting annual meeting with yes, a lot of... Yes, it'll be <laughs> one by one. Everyone has to read it up. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's something that we have going on. Um, just an update on uh, the ADA, the IT, and the joint grant with Freetown. Um, the state has not let us know um, anything on any of those yet. Um, they told it sometime in November, so probably okay. January. Okay. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about this in the next issue. So. Um, the Board of Health inspector has resigned, and I know we'll talk about that. We hired a new part-time maintenance per, uh, person uh, position to support the PD in the town, and they started a few weeks ago, so they're well-immersed in the town, and they're chugging along. 
Um, we're going to get the jump on the budget season. We have individual budget workshops scheduled with the department heads and the town accountant to make sure we're all starting from the same place and making okay. this our budget this year. Okay. Um, we've tasked the department heads with updating the FAQ section of the web pages. So um, I believe everyone has got back to us now and has updated the FAQs, but I'll do a check on it. But there was a few issues that I saw with kind of format matting issues. Like you would be looking at one page and it would be over here. You'd be looking at on another page and over there. Okay. So not only do we want to do that, we want to make sure that people are able to navigate the, the web page and look for the same stuff in the same area. Okay. Um, uh, we are catching up on any minutes, especially with the BOS. We've got um, tons and tons of minutes for you guys to uh, approve. And we're making sure that we don't get behind. Uh, we're also asking other boards to ensure that not only are they up to date on their minutes, that they they have a plan going forward, and that we're going to try to support them by um, by going out and looking for that position again that we couldn't fill Before. with the secretary. Um, because I, some of them, it's it's really a struggle to to get them done, and we want to be able to support the boards when they yeah. need them, especially for something like a hearing or an executive session or something that they might not be sure how to get those minutes done. Okay. okay. Um, I did have a conversation just to add a little bit with one of the attorneys, um, and you know, there's a, a, a varying opinion on what minutes are supposed to be. They're still supposed to be representative of what happened at the meeting. So maybe, not immediately, but maybe, you know, um, maybe at some point in January, um, the end of January, maybe we could put together a little seminar on what we want to see because sure. it seems to me that, you know, some boards aren't really they're very brief. Others seem to be very long. Yeah. So, you and, know, and we're make very sure. Lucky. And we're, we're very lucky that if, if the minutes are maybe too brief for someone to get a full picture, there's a very good chance that it's been captured also. Right. You know, and, and even though it's not an official yeah. record, it, it's something that people can Right. Turn there to. was discussion at the last meeting about, you know, doing bullet points so that the, me the minutes can get done. But, you know, like the attorney had said that, we need a little bit more information than sure. that because it's still, as of now, the legal record. Yep. Um, so maybe we can just look. I don't know. The attorneys usually give us a couple of free seminars yeah. a year. We're maybe we do can procurement, but we can absolutely do. Yeah. Maybe that one of the part other ones. Of the open meeting. Yeah. Law for minutes. Yep. Okay. So maybe we can. You can just put that and have a conversation when you get a chance with them about that. So. We'll too. Okay. Um, we've got some CGI mapping uh, programs. It's been rolled out to our department heads. Um, at the October uh, department head meeting. Um, it's going to enable us to put extra layers on things that we deem important as a town to, to map them, um, especially things like, you know, where all our fire, fire hydrants are for the fire department. Um, but we could actually go even a step further and we can map where some of our, um, our elderly are um, if we're having an emergency and be able to reach out to them and make routes to them if there is an emergency. Um, so right now, uh, department heads are figuring out what they want to put on it to customize it, but it should be live as of today um, to actually just go in and look at it. Uh, I didn't get the link, but I'll get the link for it so anyone can go and look at it. We'll put it on the, uh, okay. on the blast so people can start just looking. I mean, it's just fascinating to go in and see all the fields that they have already mm -hmm. and stuff that you can really see, but we were watching them do um, triangulate uh, an area so they could see um, from what point the fire hydrant is, how much hose that they would mm -hmm. need to roll out to make sure that they had enough to, uh, you know, to support a fire in this house or that house or the other. So it's really interesting, and I think it's something that going forward will help make our town a little bit safer and a little bit easier to navigate. Um, the MCCPO classes taken for procurement certification um, uh, as part of my job and um, as part of uh, Lorraine's position, we've updated some of what we're doing as far as procurement. Um, there was a class that was at the in October, in October uh, for the first level of procurement training. Um, both of us took it and passed it. For the, so that's the first step for me out of three. 
Um, I also got my notary public designation. So come on in, I'll start putting my stamp out on everyone. Um, Viewpoint software is our permitting software. Um, this week, it's supposed to be in its beta testing phase. Uh, we've been using it already to build permits, so people have been able to build, but they've still had to come in and pay. So now it's going to be that they're going to get to pay online, and that's going to do a bunch of things. It's going to be more convenient for the taxpayer to be able to, to pay online, and it's going to take some of the traffic out of town hall. So. You mean paying by credit card? By debit and charge. Yeah, debit and charge. Uh, I will find out specifically if there's a charge associated with the charge, but I know the debit is free. Yeah. Usually they charge per transaction, yeah. yep. and they do that, but it's a convenience fee, just like anything else you're going to do online. Okay. Yep. But um, I, I don't remember if it was 50 cents or 250, but it's not a massive charge. Um, da -da -da, the town administrator office remod model. Well, my office in specific is about 99% complete. Um, if anyone's coming to the town hall, um, we've put out plenty of posts to let them know that we've reconfigured town hall to make it a lot more accessible to people. And we've put all our heavy service level departments down on the first floor. Um, so people not only can get that one stop shopping, but that they can actually have uh, not go up those granite steps, which can be a little treacherous. Mm -hmm. um, unless they want to visit me, then they have to go up the treacherous steps. <laughs> it's like a challenge. Um, so yeah, we've, um, we've removed some of the old carpets. Uh, we've added the, the tiles, um, we've added some new paint, and that's going to continue into um, to Tracy and Lorraine's area um, to keep modernizing and making sure everything's clean and bright and comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, most of the stuff is taking away. There hasn't been a lot of additive. The most of the process is taking away the old um, and then, you know, putting a nice fresh coat of paint on to make everything. Yeah, because better. there's new tile in there too, so. Yep, yep. Okay. And, uh, and we've been working with the same tile that we, um, the school uses, um, and so we've, uh, we've got some of that laid down. It looks pretty bright and nice and cheerful in there now. Um, so the, town, uh, the fire department and PD are working together on some dispatch duties um, and some other uh, projects that they're working for a precinct map to get better response times. I'll get more updates on that. It just started about two or three weeks ago. Okay. Um, we went out to bid for the latest Green Communities Grant, um, meaning that we, we hired someone to do the work for our Green Communities Grant, and that's starting right now, and that's going to the high school this year to reduce energy use. It's about 223, 223. Um, and um, we've got some good payback on our investments um, for Assawampsit. Um, we've reduced our energy bills in Assawampsit by $48,000 per year, um, and we're hoping to start doing the same um, at Aponiquit, um, and then that helps us overall, and then this is all funded through grant money. Um, Thank you to Nate, yeah. darling. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Nate, uh, Lorraine, and Tracy all worked on these um, to get them together. Um, looking to leverage the MVP grant for opportunities in town. So um, we need our disaster mitigation plan is our next step. Um, and then we can start looking for a lot more grants through the MVP designation, which is kind of the biggest What's gateway. What's the MVP? The MVP. Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness. Okay. Yeah. So that's where all the- I knew what it was. <laughs> that's where you all just the- You just want to say it. Yeah. See if I can mess it up. That's where all the grant money is located, this year. They funneled a lot of the money into that area because they're really helping to fight things like climate change and to be able to make sure that um, whatever we're doing is a sustainable solution for any type of building projects or any type of projects that we have with any of our resources. Um, and last but definitely not least um, is we rolled out our EAP program to the department heads, and now the department heads are starting to share it with their people. What the EAP program is, is a total wellness program um, for any of our associates to be able to um, access. Um, it has a lot of things, but a few of the great things are, it has some mental health counseling, some crisis calls, some work-life balance, um, I guess you would call it um, coaching, um, 
And if you're having issues with any type of parenting, elder care, legal issues, or financial issues, they give you uh, referrals to make sure that you're dealing with ethical people and people that have been um, vetted throughout their services. Um, they also work one-on-one -on -one with the uh, with the individuals calling, and it's 100% confidential. So if someone's having a problem at work and they're going through a traumatic time and divorce or you know something like that, and they want to be able to reach out to someone but maybe have it a little bit confidential, we've given them that opportunity. Um, any type of mental health issue is pretty much at the forefront of what's going on in uh, today's kind of cultural society. Um, it's something that if you broke your leg, you wouldn't feel bad about getting treatment, but if you were having a mental health issue, people still have a stigma attached to it, and they might not be getting the help they need. Uh, we want to make sure we're offering that to them, and I know all our four, uh, our chief, both our chiefs were really excited for the possibilities of being able to launch this to our first responders, um, because there's a lot of research around what's going on with first responders and burnout right. and, and stuff that's going on right now. So we're happy to be able to help and support them with these type of initiatives. And uh, we're happy to start rolling that out. Okay. Okay. Great. So that's Thank what's you. going on. Great. Thank you, Maureen. That Thank was you. great. Um, of course, this was the first time, so <laughs> I'm sure it'll be a little it, more. Brief. It was much bigger. I cut it down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, but it's the first time, so. <laughs> um, Okay, so we are resuming our agenda with number 12. Uh, review and vote on the contract renewals for towns boarding with the animal shelter. So we currently have agreements with the towns of Cushnet, Berkeley, Bridgewater, Carver, East Bridgewater, Freetown, Halifax, Hanson, Rainham, Rochester, and Wareham to board dogs at our animal shelter, at the Lakeville Animal Shelter. All contracts expire on December 31st, 2019. The breakdown of fees received during 2019 through November 21st for each town is below. Uh, so, total funds received for just boarding other dogs from other communities was $4,305. So, let's we board for that many, huh? We board for that many towns? That many towns, yes. And actually, um, the the numbers for the annual um, boarding fees have gone down significantly since we started this because the people in the other towns realize now that they're going to have to pay, um, you know, the board and a fifty dollar fee to pick up their dog at the animal shelter. So um, we've been helping the other towns um, with their stray dog issues. Hmm. Okay. All right. So. So we have one contract to approve? I just did one contract. It's oh. the same contract. It's just the town names change. Okay. Okay, so... so um, excuse me. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I guess the question would be that um, doesn't seem like a significant amount of money that we get. <laughs> Should we continue with this program at all? Well, these, these fees don't reflect um, the dogs that are surrendered and brought into our adoption program, uh, which we then adopt out. And um, I believe the adoption fee is two three fifty now. Oh, okay. I believe. So any of those dogs that aren't picked up after 10 days, if they're adopted, will go into our program. So then we make money from those dogs. Okay. From those adopters. Right. Yes. I got it. Plus, this doesn't include any kind of... Uh, Donations or right. whatever of, of that which we get yeah. an amazing yeah. amount, amount of donations, yeah. especially okay. from people that don't live in Lakeville. Yep, a yeah. lot of people associated with these towns. That's great. I mean, you know, I I do think this is a testament to you know Dave Freight's being committed to the animals and whatever, but um, and I know Tracy's really involved in that too. Yeah, yeah, but I. Uh, but David does a great job. He does a great job, but Hopefully I, I he doesn't think retire soon. Yeah, I think the word's <laughs> getting out, you know, that he does do a great job. So again, I think this is something we're definitely going to have to revisit if he decides to retire someday. But um, right now, I will entertain a motion to approve the contracts 
with each of these towns to um, renew the contracts with each of these towns. That's so moved. All right. Second on that. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So you'll have all those in the office to sign? Or they are in the sign folder. Oh, okay, all the women here? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so item number 13 is vote to accept the resignation of Kevin Bernardo, who um, is still our health agent for, he's still there, right? Just for two yeah. months, I guess. Okay. Um, and to receive an update on the health agent position. So health agent Kevin Bernardo has submitted a letter of resignation effective November 29th, 2019. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to read his letter. Well, it's, uh, uh, first of all, let's uh, accept uh, his uh, resignation, unfortunately. Yeah. I know, he's gonna be tough to replace. So, um, I'll second that. I'll second that. Okay. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, I don't know if you've had more conversation with Maureen and are more up to date, no, so you can I take had over now. <laughs> um, so, the position I know was posted internally, and the closing date for that posting was November 22nd. Um, we have an attached job description. Okay, uh, has the job description changed? Um, I, no, the job description has not changed. It was done in 2017. Okay. Yeah, it's a new job description, and the dollar amounts are still good. I, I looked at our oh. MMA salary okay. Okay. thing. Um, our job description dollars are still good for the position. Okay, so uh, I'm glad to see that we uh, posted it internally first for a week to give other town employees the opportunity to apply. Uh, so that was from November 15th through last Friday. Mm -hmm. Did we get anybody internally? No, we did not. Okay. So the next question, I'm oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? No, go ahead. You? you can take this. Um, the next question would be, how are we going to advertise this position? So we've had some success um, in using ZipRecruiter and um, the MMA. Okay. Yep. So you're going to put it in the beacon? Yep. That's what it is, right? Right. Beacon. Yeah. So that yeah. would mean that December's probably already out. Well, we're hoping. Um, those things pick up really quick. Well, I'll take that back. You can put it on their website right away. Yeah. Yeah. And people are watching that website. So, yeah. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Probably not worth putting it in the beacon. Then. Yeah. So, um. Because they charge you to do that. I believe Nate had a date that he wanted. He wanted to do it only for three weeks. Mm, it says, I don't, think it I don't says know if it says it in the yeah. description or if it will just say it in the posting. But, um, we need to fill this rather quickly. We have. You know, some pressing Issues. needs. Yep. Um, so we're really looking to, you know, do a full court press and, and okay. get this going. Um, yeah, and Nate had called me and, you know, he said the same thing that you just mentioned, that, you know, he had, he specifically had put a lot of time in in 2017 with yep. all the appropriate yep. parties getting the job description yep. to a, you know, a, a much better, you know, um, representation of what we wanted and the salary and everything. So I know that, you know, everyone's put a lot of time into it and I agree it'd be really yeah. nice if we could get someone. And it didn't change any of the wording or responsibilities. Of yeah. I, uh, I don't know if there's any um, organization for Board of Health agents that can be put out on the web, I don't know. I know, I think the building inspectors have a website that you can I put out. Yeah, I mean, you can put it out there too. I, yeah. I mean, we don't use Indeed or any so of those. the second you put it on ZipRecruiter, it gets picked up by Indeed. By all those. Yep. Okay. Yeah, they'll go okay. on all the meta searches. So if anyone's looking for that position, in, in you know, especially yep. in this area, it'll just automatically come up. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, 15? Agenda item 15. I think we're almost back to order here. Um... Request for Taunton Water Connections portion of 39 Cross Street and 5 Harding Street. 
Um, I'm okay if, Rich, you want to take this because I'm not familiar with well, all these. Well, uh, first of all, uh, we should have a plan here. I don't see any plan. I don't, I don't even know what lot it is. I mean, excuse me, the lot is listed on here. But I, I think we need to have a plan as to where this water line I know the one on Harding Street, and I know there's a water line on Harding Street, which is Route 44, but there's no water line on 39 Cross Street. I checked the map. So I don't know how you ask for water for 39 Cross Street for three residential dwellings when 39 Cross Street, I looked at the map today, is only one lot. So I don't understand what the, what this means. And I'm not familiar enough to give you a good rundown well, on I, what I, that map I would look like. I thought Bob Pellucci would be here, but I guess he's not. Yeah. So I would like to see, you know, where the water line is going. Uh, I mean, I know he has a plan that's in front of the, the planning board, but... I think one of the problems that the town has had in the past is that we don't have a plan on file as to where these water lines are going. Okay. Okay? So I think that's number one. Do we ask, I'm sorry, Tracy, do we ask them for, when we when we get these applications, do we ask for those type of maps? Um, sometimes. Sometimes they just supply them. I never ask for them. But sometimes it's supplied with the. Well, sounds like you'd like them all yeah. the time as part. Well, of I think I think you know if, if I'm looking at something and I'm going to vote on something, I mean, I, uh, I I give you an example. I know that the board uh, approved seven house lots on Rhode Island Road, which was part of the Ted Williams and the Ted Williams Lakeville Hospital, you know, property, and they approved it based upon single family homes. Well. Two of the lots is 14 units, you know, being put on that. I don't know if we had a change or a modification to that request. Did we, Tracy? Yeah. Um, Did the board vote on it? I know we were notified about the change from um, the Department of Housing. I believe we also did a water connection to change the project. I can look at it, yeah. but I think we did. Okay. But, so, I mean, as an example, and not picking on, you know this particular developer, but it's asking for three residential connections for a maximum of 1,320 gallons per day. We ought to approve this by lot to make sure that they're only going to build a single family house and not try once again to combine them and build a 40B project. Because I looked at the, the acreage here and I think the acreage, if I remember correctly, is about 12 acres, you know, all together. Now, okay. there's a bunch of wetlands in there, okay, as well. And there's some um, heritage turtle stuff that needs uh -huh. to be addressed, too. So I would suggest that we don't right. approve this until we know what, the, I mean, what the, they're doing. The only reason I know even anything about this is because I've gone to three planning board meetings when I don't, where they talked about the commercial building, I have no clue on the residential dwellings. I mean, it might be nice to have more information. Well, I looked at the plan too, and the plan is, uh, is going to require it to be sprinkled. Okay. So where's the water line going? How many hydrants are we going to have inside the property? You know, because there's a fee associated with those hydrants that have to be paid for. And so I, I don't know what I'm voting on. Yeah. So, so, so if we, we could can, get we more can, information. Yeah, we can get more information. And not only that, we can probably button up the process. So, yeah. so when they're presenting or, or filling out any of these forms, that they can answer those specifics. Will you sit with me and help sure. create that form? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this will definitely be tabled for... So moved. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. All right. 
Um, okay, so agenda item number 16, discuss extending closing times for package store liquor licenses, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. So the ABCC allows the local licensing authority to extend the Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve package store closing hours until 1130. In the past, the board has kept with the standard um, 11 p.m. closing times. So I guess the question is, do we want to continue with 11? We can go as late as 1130, correct? Yes. I would hope that the stores <laughs> would close by 11 p.m. <laughs> on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. I... So I make a motion we keep it as standard 11 p.m. closing time. I second that, and I just want to say that I think 11 is a great time. <laughs> um, all those in favor. 11 o'clock is late anyway. I know. All those in favor. Uh, Aye. Madam Chair. Yes. And just for information, none of the stores have requested it, but it's just a requirement case. every year we have okay. to do it. Okay. I say go home and enjoy your family, but let's, what do I know? Um, so, hold on. I have minutes. What's the next? Um, I have number 17. Yes. Number 17, is that right? Yes, that's okay. the next one. Um, oh, so discuss extending closing times for restaurants with liquor not licenses on New Year's Eve. The board acting as the local licensing authority is allowed to extend the last call hours on New Year's Eve for restaurants with liquor licenses until 1.30 a.m. with all patrons out by 2 a.m. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Let's see where we're at. So we did the temporary... So we have the review and vote to approve the selectmen meeting minutes of October 7th and November 12th. So October 7th would be, um, I'm the only one that can speak to it, so we need to use the rule of necessity. Yes, thank you. Um, to approve those, yes. I'm not quite sure. Someone can or, help me. I can make or, a, I can make a motion yeah. to approve it, but I I, I can't, you can't vote. vote. Yeah. So okay, I'll make or a you motion. Can wait till John. Um, I, I think he was ready to. Well, I can't speak for him, so. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, the October 7, thousand and nineteen uh, minutes of the board of selectmen. Uh, I'll second by the rule of. You can second. Okay. But um, I can't vote on it. Yep. Yeah. So. We will use the rule of necessity here and pass that. Yes. Can we do it, Tracy? I don't think so. I think, okay. I think the rule of necessity, you have to have a quorum and say one was a new was member it, that wasn't yeah. there and one was okay. a member that was present. Yeah. So we might want to just table these till our next meeting. Okay. So we will Let's table this October 7th to our next meeting. We can do the 12th. And we will do the 12th. Um, any comments, questions, changes on that one? October 12th? Yep. Uh, November make a motion 12th. to approve the uh, minutes of uh, no, October 12th. November 12th, 2019. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any new business? Um, no. New old. Okay. Um, we just had a correction on our free cash calculation. Um, uh, the, uh, the state came back, um, and we had had um, for our parks returned earnings um, is now one twenty four nine thirty. It was at one oh four, so it's a correction in our favor from the state. Oh, well, that's good. At least it didn't go the nice. other way. Yeah. yeah. So just to put it out there. Okay. Thank you. Any old business? I have a new new item. Oh, new item. Okay. Um, I uh, trying to be as transparent as possible, you know, to the townspeople. 
Um, the town has, as many other towns, has been subpoenaed by the um, grand jury uh, having to do with the uh, host agreements for the marijuana uh, retailers. And uh, so um, we're not going to talk about it, but I want the townspeople to know because it's being reported in the media. We got an we got a, a email from Channel 2, I guess Friday, the Boston Globe, you know, has reported. So it's out there in the media, and I think the townspeople should be aware that our town has been subpoenaed as well. And um, we'll, the board will have no further comment after that. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else? Um, under old business, all I had was my minutes conversation that we talked about. I just wanted to be sure that we um, talked about that. Actually, I do want to go back to new business. I'm sorry. Um, I also talked to council about um, remote participation. And um, town council feels as though the most difficult thing about remote participation is just making sure we have reliable <laughs> technology, which goes along with anything. But um, there needs to be a physical quorum. So that would mean that on a board of selectmen, our board is currently three members, two members would have to be present. So on a five member board, three members would have to be physically present. Um, but the remote um, participant can vote. Okay. They can vote. However, she cautioned on um, once you say you're going to do it, you have to make sure your technology is, you know, so, and we have to figure that out before we, you know, so we can put that on a future to-do list and work on those details. But, you know, there's so many people in town that I know say to me, you know, geez, I would love to participate, but I travel for work or... You know, and um, I, I hate to turn away people who want to be on some boards and, you know, at least participate, especially on some of the boards that may not meet as frequently or even if they do, you know, someone's, you know, wants to put time in, then um, it can be something that we work towards. So I just wanted to bring it up as a, because um, we weren't sure, I know we talked and we weren't sure if you could vote or couldn't vote, but you can vote so that's kind of an important <clears throat> so I can get some um, other towns I can see how they've done if they've done remote participation and yeah any, or any even as a board of selectmen things. when we have you know a full board maybe we can discuss it further to see if we want to go forward sure. but for that discussion if yeah. you want to just Absolutely. get some information I don't want to assume that you know, my fellow board members want to no rush. <laughs> do it. No. Yeah. Let's not but get too excited. You're going to be it. on Facetime. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's. No, I don't mind doing it, but I just said, you know, it's not. Should be. A yeah, priority. no, it should. Yeah, definitely not. You know, a rush, rush. And again, you know, once we say, you know, we're going to do it, she cautioned me that the most difficult part for towns is making sure that their technology can. You know, that people can hear the person. It's not just, oh, what was that? <laughs> you know, yeah. so it has to be done properly. So, but it is, a, you know, on the whatever. So, okay. um, any other business anywhere? Anything? Yeah, I got I, some old business. Okay, stuff. old okay. business. Um, first thing is that uh, at the last meeting, I requested that the... Uh, the owner of the Lakeville Hospital come and uh, meet with the board to discuss, you know, what's going on in the plans. And I know that uh, Maureen has uh, contacted, in fact, we saw an email that said he uh, didn't want to come to the meeting, uh, but he'd be willing to meet with uh, one member of the board and the entire administrator. And so with the board's permission, I'd like to, uh, to I, do that. I nominate you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and then... Report whatever. back to the board, yeah. yeah. Yep, that would be great. Um, the fiscal 20 budget that we're in, yep. okay, um, I haven't got a copy of the year-to-date numbers yet, but let's wait till November's done, which is almost okay. this week, and then we'll 
to his name you can provide me with that sure. after that. Uh, do you want a copy of that too? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll print them out. There, it's too much to look at. Um, um, oh yeah, but, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I, ha I have them printed in my office. Okay, well yeah. let's wait till the end of November because sure. it's this yeah. Friday. Um, I'm just thinking what a reasonable printout. I hate to like say to Todd, "Hey, can you print out?" And then have you walk in four days later and say, hey, you know, so I don't know if we can. I can do it through mine. I get the same one. Okay. Um, I'm not a crazy fan of his formatting on there. So I want to work with him and see if he can format it different because the lines don't line up. I don't like it either. They're really yeah. difficult to I read. Mean, and you, I you would won't actually, catch yourself with a piece of paper. It's not his fault. Down. No, no, yeah. no. Yeah. I would actually, I wouldn't mind seeing it at the end of every month. Yep. Yeah. You know, I don't, do you want it more than we'll that? Get it. We, we get it around the first week. He, yeah, I get it around fine. the first so week the, yeah. of the month. First or second selectman's meeting, whatever that is, yeah. you know, somewhere in there. Yeah. I'll make sure I have okay. them available. And then Maureen is going to look through the budget uh, on a monthly basis mm -hmm. and then identify key areas that we should be concerned about, like fire, fire over time. time. I mean, you know, yeah. so there is yeah. some concerns now so that we have Absolutely. to plan for. Um, so just to keep a handle yep. on those those issues and the same okay. thing with the revenue projections mm -hmm. you know i know that he has a one-page summary yep. that he can provide us so that so we do that too and we'll coordinate that thank you okay and then uh, i talked to maureen today about the fiscal 21 uh, budget process and uh, revenue you know projections and that as a board and i know she's about to have the meetings with the department heads to to discuss the budget but we need to give her some guidelines as to what our expectations are as far as the budget can concerned. We don't want the department heads nor the school committee to just go out and say, oh, we can ask for anything we want, because that's going to be a waste of everybody's time. Right. Okay. Right. So. We had the wording down that it would be a maintenance budget. Yeah, maintain what you got. That's what I yeah. proposed yeah. to her. And if we talk about you know, we need to add a person or something like that that we can discuss that during the budget process. But right now, yeah. what do we need to do to maintain the uh, staffing and the services that we have today? Yeah. Okay. Now, that's not going to include any uh, cost of living increases mm -hmm. for the union contracts because those are going to all have to be negotiated, which we should discuss at yeah, the exactly next meeting session. again. Yeah. You know, so when John is here, yeah. we're all on the same page as to what we should be doing. Um, and then the same thing as far as the uh, the revenue projections. Mm -hmm. uh, if you work with Todd, he has a format that he uses mm -hmm. to put together the, the revenue you know projections. Yep. And once and, again, and I have one that, but I will work with whatever. him to see if he has. I mean, maybe it's the same thing. Okay. I don't know. I'll work with him to see if he's uh, better. So we need to do that because yep. uh, the budget process. So we only have one meeting. Well, we have two meetings in December, but yeah. It's December 9th and then it's the 30th, you know, a month goes by like yep, nothing. Yep. So we need to get okay. Yeah, there's that a three week place. gap between the 9th and the 30th and the, all the holidays in there. So, yeah, but I can give them my direction on, on being a maintenance budget and, until yeah. you guys do a formal direction <coughs> on where you want to go. Okay. And then Maureen told me today that I'm the representative for the uh, regional finance committee. Yep. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, you agreed to that, by the way. You did agree to that. <laughs> uh, and they're trying to set a meeting up between the two members from the town and the school committee and, chairman and um, the superintendent and the business manager. Right. So, uh, so, okay. So we'll sit down and discuss that and I'll give the board an update. Okay. Okay. Um, I have talked to a couple department heads, actually more than a couple, but um, and as far as like capital. Um, we spent a lot of money last year, so I did say to some of the department heads that, you know, we're trying to put back together the Capital Expenditures Committee. I don't know if that's going to happen in time or not. I can um, reach out again to, yeah, um, to Katie. Katie. Yeah. Um, but either way, um, I've suggested, and, uh, you know, this is my opinion only, that we spent a lot of money last year from the capital, and I, I've suggested that they put their their number one should be their yeah. number one. And there really is, I, I mean, our, our departments are probably better um, equipped than they've been in a very long time yep. at this point. Um, and I wouldn't expect their needs would, but there'd be a lot of yeah. I don't. I'm not expecting too many yeah surprises. You know, you have the usual, uh, you know, maybe a couple of new cruisers, which are. 
you know, um, on a rolling kind of a, and the highway department always, you know, needs something. But, you know, I, I have said to them that, you know, really think about it, you know, and I, we bought, I don't even know how many mowers <coughs> last year, mm -hmm. you know, so everyone really should be in a pretty decent situation. But again, we don't want to let things like that get away from us. No, but, because it's <coughs> much more expensive, right, you know, to deal with it, right, when it's gone. Yeah. And, you know, if we could actually get an update on the capital money, I don't know if we have. Well, what I was saying to Maureen yeah. is I had promised her the the capital plan process that actually I put together and I was here at the Finance Committee 20 plus years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I had it on a flash drive, but I don't. Okay. So, but I know I can get it. I'm going to give it to Mari and she's going to okay. look at it. And then the board will discuss it okay. hopefully at the next meeting. Okay. And we can decide if that's going to work for us or we need to make changes. Yeah, and if we need to make changes, I'm pretty decent. Yeah, I just know in the past, you know, it was like a lesser expensive item was put in number one and number yeah. two was the more yeah. important, you and, know, and, and, and I'm like, let's, let's, Dispense with the, yeah. you know, and, and, and let's hoping just to work with the department heads yeah. and really narrow it down. So when it gets to the capital expenditures committee, they're not sorting through kind of that fluff that you're talking about. Right. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Pragmatic kind of girl. Yeah. Let's just. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So um, we have executive session on here in case you want to talk about any kind of collective bargaining. But that's if I think we should wait till oh, John's, till here, John's you? back. Okay, yeah. so then um, we won't because we're going to have to be assigned to do something. Yeah, so then we don't even need to go into. I don't think so, unless you have something else. Unless you nothing, have nothing litigation, that anything, mm -hmm. nothing that because we have collective bargaining or litigation. So if there's either one of those things, but if not, I am happy to entertain a motion. To adjourn. Uh, just going on my more thing. Okay. <laughs> going on to other items that are attached to the agenda. Yep. The, uh, there's an invite. You got you got the invite actually. Yep. Uh, to go to our colony to uh, talk about future of member and non-member mm -hmm. enrollments and feedback. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'd like to go. Um, I don't know if any other members want to go. Do you want to go too? You know what? I wish I could go. I really would like to go, but that's Plymouth County Commissioners meeting okay. that night, so that's where I'm going to be. Okay, so I'll go. I'll be. I'll be going too. Check. Okay. Yeah, I really think that that's an important thing for. I do too. Um, you know, and I, I would love to go, but I'm going to the Plymouth County. Uh, anything else? Nope. Okay. Then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 712. Not bad.